everybody. Welcome to another exciting, fun-filled, you-can't-dare-miss-it episode of Radio Rama, where I show you, as the name implies, how to work on radios, but also TVs and record players and stereos and anything else that runs on glowing vacuum tubes. And today, we have a 1954 CBS Model 5165 Ebony. I'm looking at this sticker. Hot Wheels. McLaren. This was probably some little kid's radio in their room or something, but uh, it was donated to us about two or three weeks ago. Five tube set. 35W4 for the rectifier, 50C5 for the output. Got a sticker. Ace Radio Company, Leonard and Howell. Rare, radios repaired right. Uphill Market Street, San Francisco. Oh. It's been in the area its whole life. That's pretty good. So, it does actually work. I tried it out just briefly. It's not very happy, but a working radio is a good way to start because that means your job is going to be all the more easier. I think the biggest challenge is going to be the case not looking so hot. Um, the good news, I don't think that's Bakelite. Look at the edge here. No, it's not Bakelite. It's, it's some other kind of plastic, but I could probably clean and buff this out. This is going to have to somehow come off because there's paper behind it. And if I'm going to clean this, there's no way I can do it with that paper. I need to take this all apart so I can clean it. That's going to be the hardest part of this whole project and fight. In fact, I might start backwards today. I might start with the case. Um, because if I can't make it look like anything like crap, then I might have to reconsider. I, I think there's also a badge missing here that probably said CBS. I think it's got potential, so I'm going to give it a shot. Why not? All right, well, here's the chassis removed. It's very dinky. This is about... Like, if I were to say, pick me the most um, generic all-American 5 radio in the land, this would just about get it. I mean, this is as basic as they come. Uh, let's see what the radio repair shop did. Looks like they replaced the original electrolytics, because it was probably a multi-section can in here, originally. They've put these Sprague atoms in place. I don't see evidence of a clamp for the original electrolytic, though. I'm looking at the quality of the soldering job. Unless they're just really good, usually the repair shops are not that great. It doesn't look great right here where that green lead is coming. It looks pretty amateurish. But the fact that I'm having to guess about it means it's not near as bad as I usually see. This cap is the most important cap in the whole thing. This is one end of the AC line, so it's a floating chassis, meaning there's not a true connection between uh, the AC plug and the chassis. Anyway, what I need to do now is, again, focus on the cabinet first. And I looked inside, and there's these tiny little clips bunch of them that hold this trim piece in and I can just see breaking those off or either they're going to fly off and I'll never see them again so I'm going to use a tiny little screwdriver try to pry those off gently and get the piece off all right well I had a heck of a time getting that off of there but I did and what's behind it is foil so it's very very delicate and I, what I noticed is that the, the, the stuff in the front was wore out looking if you flip it over and this new foil has been exposed. So I'm going to keep it over here so I don't mess it up. Now what I'm going to do is get all this disgusting white crap off these knobs and also do an initial pass at cleaning up the case. That's going to require going over to the sink. I wish I knew more about plastic because if that's Bakelite and I go over there and scrub it, I'll probably never get that sheen back. But I don't think it is. It certainly doesn't sound like Bakelite. All right, so I did do a cleaning, and then I realized that it might be Bakelite. And so it looked like initially the finish was ruined. 
So I decided I really don't want to paint it, especially this time of year. So I uh, did something I've never done before, which I soaked it in tire shine. <laughs> Stuff's got a lot of silicone in it, so I figured at least it would do is maybe seal up the surface and then I could apply my uh, typical car wax application. The other thing that is in this disgusting thing, that's the knobs and the indicator. You can't see it anymore because all the disgusting stuff that was built up around it came off. In fact, I'm probably going to rinse this out in the sink and maybe fill it up again. Jesus. It's like years and years of gross little remnants of a little kid picking his nose and touching the knobs. Now I took the trim over. Cleaned all this grime off. Actually, there was a lot of, there was um, some sort of gold coloration of this using lacquer, but the lacquer was shot. So I just took some carb cleaner and stripped off the lacquer, so now I'm down to the chrome. I think that looks better anyway. Refreshed the knobs and a little bit of ammonia, and they're cleaning up. So now that the cosmetics are in good stable order, and it looks like it's going to be a winner, I'm going to replace the electrolytics and the paper caps. I've been working on a lot of complicated sets, so this is almost ridiculously, stupidly simple. God, look how far that lead goes to there. Alright, well, probably I'm just going to run a jumper wire then. Let's see what this guy is. It's kind of the same deal. I think what I'll do is I'll put the... Um, mm, put both negatives of the new electrolytics here and run jumper wires to them. So we have our two replacement electrolytics. We have our safety cap, which is the X2, Y2 across the line safety cap for the chassis ground, which is this guy. We have a .047 rated cap for this guy. While I'm at it, while I go ahead and get the other value that I see here, which is .02 microfarad. And what are you? .047. There, that's all the caps we need. Keep them handy so that I can get to stuff easier and then I'll cut some, that was nice, some jumper wires to go to uh, the two common negatives right there. All right, I'm gonna try to film this. I'm gonna do it as quickly as I can because I know it's boring. Uh, but let's go ahead and start. I got my tools laid out here. I've got my nippers, my strippers, and my pliers, and my solder, and my capacitors, and my jumper wire. So, first thing I'm going to do is twist these two negative leads of these electrolytics together, like so. Snip the ends for good measure, and we'll cut both of the electrolytic leads from out of here. And we can see that's the common negative that they share. I'm going to wet these electrolytics down just a little bit on the ends to make sure we get a good solid base of solder. And likewise what I want to do is pull the remains of that old lead off. Maybe bend over this way. And now get my lighting situation better here. We will Attach the two negatives. Come on, get out of the way. Quit being painful. Good thing I don't have a TV show because I'll probably be getting booted off there with a hook right now. Oh, come on. <laughs> we don't believe in editing around here. We're just going to go for broke. Not many people watch this channel anyway. All right. There we are. Got our two negative leads tied here. Let's get this guy kind of like situated. Now, what do we need to do? We need to find enough length of wire to run to these two positives. Two negatives, rather. Okay, so we need to run from here to one of these suckers. You want to keep your length as short as you possibly can. The longer you make it, the more there's the chance that you're going to have some sort of interference. So 
So it'll run one end of the line here. This little fella right here, I'm gonna pinch it around the edges, like so. And keep everything nice and tight too. You don't want any long wiggly leads. And then when you do your soldering, make sure you get real nice and hot. Then we want to clip the excess and run that over to this guy. And we'll cut. I'll leave a little bit of a chunk of the old lead there so I can solder onto it. Makes life a little bit easier. And I'm going to try to run it underneath this stuff. I just think it looks neater when you do it this way. And we will tie that to this connection here. That's a positive of electrolytic number one. And as seen, uh, we have the two shared negatives right here. So now we have one more. This is not as far away. And let's measure for it. That's about right. Doesn't have to be like super precise, but you don't want to go crazy with your links. That seems to be a mistake that a lot of beginners make, which is they'll have super long leads and they also don't get their solder hot enough. All right. Sometimes you can use gravity to your advantage. I'm using a Metcal soldering station, by the way. A little spindy, but since I use mine literally seven days a week, to me it's worth every penny. Just makes life a little bit easier. How are we doing on time here? Four minutes in. Slow poke the day. All right. So, now we have... This one hooked in, and we will solder that in. All right, both electrolytes are now installed. I'm not going to show all of these. I just get a feeling you guys are about to probably just doze off, but I'm going to show you how I replace some of the paper caps. So these guys will have a marking on them. Sometimes you have to scrape the wax off a little bit to see it. But what I do, this is important here, clip one end. I kind of did that with the electrolytes too. At a time, I leave a little bit of a lead remaining so that you have a reference point. If you lose your place, it'll be like any mini mini mo, which is the longest lead that looks like it hasn't been snipped yet. All right, so we got that one end done. And we'll wanna trim up our mess there. And then we'll cut the other end of the paper cap out. Bring that over. And due to how small these newer capacitors are compared to the old ones, you can really kind of get in there and tighten your spaces up quite significantly. All right, so that's one paper cap. Sometimes I straighten them out a little bit. Not because you have to, but it just looks neater. And we'll do one more, and then we'll give it a test to make sure we're still working. And then I'll replace the rest of these, and don't worry, I'm not going to film it. You don't have to watch it. I just do this every once in a while, so maybe some people who are a little bit newer. Just a reminder not to use steel wool in here. It's, it's attaching to my pliers here, magnetically. I just want to get stuff real hot. It has to be molten. It's kind of like if, if anyone does any welding, it's the same thing. You want a good, hot quality weld. Same with soldering. Because if you don't get it hot enough, then you'll be in trouble because you'll get what are called cold solder joints. And that can lead to eventual or immediate intermittent failure. Alright, the last cap I'm going to do before I shut her off, and really I've only got two more caps to go, is this guy, which is the aforementioned oh-so-important safety cap. And I can see it goes from there to there, and since this is so much smaller, I don't need to bridge that huge gap. Again, you want to keep your leads as short 
as possible. Keep it nice and tidy and neat. And let's go up here. And again, like we're going to attach it snugly. And we'll solder that in. Voila! Now we have one, two, three, four, five of the caps replaced. There's two more to go. But first, let's test this set out and make sure it still works. All right, here we go. Watch it not work. I guarantee I did something stupid just now. I do see filament. I have to say that because if I say it'll work, it won't. So I have to always doubt myself significantly. Should be coming up by now. Man, at first I thought I had silver mica disease, and I'm, I still may, but I think it's a contact issue. These tubes, are either that or dust bunnies. Who knows? I might have gotten steel wool in there. That would really suck. But something seems to be making a irregular contact. Well, poo. One of my mica cans has gone bad. Well, not the can, but the capacitor in the bottom of it. Crap. prepared to say it's necessarily it seems like the radio still kind of wants to work all right I know this is boring as hell for you guys so I'm gonna see I want to make sure it's not a transformer because that's a pain in the butt I think it still might be a contact issue all right, well, I've returned to it the second day, and that consistent crackling, that is a capacitor that's gone bad in one of the RF cans, so I need to figure out which one it is. That stinks. I was hoping that wasn't the case. All right, um, all right, never mind. My video camera's acting funny. This RF transformer was bad, so I replaced it. Both of these were way out of whack. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my signal generator and uh, make sure these two guys are aligned there's a little bit of distortion happening right now and I'm not happy about that so the best way is to get out a signal generator get your tone um, turn your your transformers to get max tone and then you'll know you're getting the, the optimum station uh, signal reception 
I don't know why, but my RF generator, for some reason, does not like this radio. So I had to do it by ear. That's Which is, what you do is you basically go in and you tweak the two little screws that are inside of there. Usually you can do it by ear, all right. The pandemic has been hard on all our kids. So the radio is working. I believe we got all the recapping job part of it done. So now it's time to uh, do a safety check to make sure it's going to pass safety. I think it should. We've got the safety cap installed to the other side of the AC line. So anyway, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to work on this. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I probably should be helping my wife prepare for that. Plus, we are buying a new oven because our old oven isn't really working anymore. So need to take care of the important things, not just the stupid radios. Okay, now it's time to test to see how much current is getting to the metal chassis. Shouldn't be much because we're going through that 0 .01 rated cap. I've got my scale set here for 2 volts AC. Maximum on that scale is 6 tenths of a volt. I have a box here that puts out 250 millivolts AC. And I can reverse the polarity. So let's probe 0.4, 2 tenths below our max threshold. Let's throw the switch in reverse make sure nothing on that side. That's clearly the neutral side. Again. I'll flip that, 0.438, looks like it's climbing up a little bit, no, it's stable, okay, so good, passes the safety test, now we can go with our next part of the process, which is taking a look at this cord, making sure it's good and supple. It's a little stiff, so I'm probably going to replace that guy, and then we're going to install the audio input feature, and then we will resume work on the cabinet and put it all back together again. Whew, I just got back from <clears throat> 15 mile bicycle trip. It's going to be Thanksgiving tomorrow. I'm eating lots of crap, so I figured I need to pre-work some of that stuff off. I'm a little bit winded, but anyway, uh, now it's time to put in the audio input, which means running a 3.5 millimeter stereo cable and running it into the set's volume control so that we can moderate the volume of the incoming signal. But as you've seen in some of my other videos, you can't just do that and call it a day. You got to put a switch in there so you can cut the radio on and off. What I mean is we're just cutting the signal off, not really cutting the power really per se. And I was looking, there's a, let's drop that in the floor. There's a wire going from here to the bottom here on this pot. And that's going to try the RF transformer. In fact, it's actually going to two. It's going to both of them. So I think it's a good chance if I snip that wire, that'll temporarily disable the radio signal. And that way, when you run your audio in, it's like some little neighborhood's yappy dog. It sounds like a bird. Who in the heck owns dogs like that? I don't know. Oh yeah, so we can't just run it directly in there like that. <laughs> We have to run it through this isolation transformer. So the primary, which is the higher end of the transformer, this goes to the top of the top and bottom of the volume pot. Secondary side, that's where the incoming audio comes in this way. And we're going to run light, right and left channels through a pair of these resistors. Two ends will be twisted together. The other two will go this way and that. These are 33 ohm. And on the primary side. We want to have a 0 0.02 rated cap and a 270k resistor. Uh, we want to run those in series and that's going to make sure that this set's automatic gain control feature will be preserved because this thing has a tendency to interrupt when the radio is on. And lastly we'll run a little switch with this little wire through the back so we can turn the radio signal on and off if we want. Alright, so we got the audio device installed. I've made a little hole here on the side and put a rubber grommet in there so this won't get chafed on the metal. And we have a little switch wire going through here. And there's a switch and that'll turn the radio signal on and off. So this is electrically done. So 
now it's time to go work on my cabinet some more. All right, so I'm gonna use my favorite product. I say that about everything, but anyway, truly is my favorite car wax. And I'm gonna use it on this case to try to bring back even more of that shine because I know that the tire stuff ain't permanent. I'd rather make sure it's gonna be shiny for real. This takes a little bit of time, and frankly, my, my knuckles are starting to get sore from doing this because I've been ripping through these guys to get them ready for a show in a couple weeks. But I've only got another week or so before I have to do it, so I can slow down pretty soon. Like I never slow down anyway. All right, I've applied a couple of applications of wax, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go after the plastic knobs, especially the centers that have tarnished a little bit. I'm going to use some Novus Number no. 2 Fine Scratch Remover for plastics. Works on just about anything, though, including metal. So the whole idea is, like, if you bring everything back the best you can, then the overall presence and presentation of it will look fantastic. All right, so she's all done. Looking a lot better. And if I decide I want to listen to the radio, I just unplug my Bluetooth thing and flip the little switch in the back. Sarah, how many times have you opened a door and been surprised? Or simply over the phone? Related to help? Search using applicable popular terms related to your... ...provided for you later. Sensitive little radio. Anyway, I'm going to let it sit here and run for a little while. You can see I reversed that foil so it looks a lot better. And um, I'm going to let it run for maybe a couple hours, make sure anything that's thermally could break down will break down. Even though I did have it on for quite a bit while I was doing the repair, so I get a feeling nothing's going to go wrong. But you just never know. It's better for it to fail when it's in the shop before it's in someone else's house. So I guess that's it for this uh, video. There won't be any videoing of radios tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving. But I have a couple episodes that are before this one that I'll be putting up soon. So thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with all my shenanigans and my uh, mistakes and all, warts and all. And uh, hope you all, probably by the time this goes up, you will either have had Thanksgiving already or about to have it. But hopefully you will have or had a good Thanksgiving. Adios, guys.